Deep in the Australian outback lies the Willandra Lakes region, a UNESCO World Heritage Site that holds one of the most remarkable chapters in human history. Back in 1974, archaeologists uncovered the skeletal remains of a man near Lake Mungo, a discovery that would spark decades of debate about the origins of Australia's first people. This individual, later named Mungo Man, had been laid to rest some 42,000 years ago, making him the oldest human skeleton ever found on the continent. His presence immediately became a symbol of Australia's ancient past, but his story was never simple. For years, researchers argued over what he truly represented. Some believed Mungo Man belonged to an entirely different lineage of humans, one that might have reached Australia long before the ancestors of modern Aboriginal Australians. The controversy only deepened with science. Early DNA testing, and later, retesting, produced conflicting results, raising the question, were Aboriginal Australians truly the first inhabitants of the land, or did another population arrive before them? The discovery itself was groundbreaking. Mungo Man was found in the Lunette Dunes along the edge of Lake Mungo, his burial offering precious clues about human life during the late Pleistocene era. Radiocarbon dating placed his death at roughly 42,000 years ago, making him a cornerstone in the study of early human migration. But he was not alone. The Willandra Lakes region has produced multiple ancient remains, as well as artifacts from nearby Cow Swamp, evidence that humans had been living in Australia for at least 47,000 years. Even so, it was Mungo Man who captured the world's attention, not only because of his age, but because of the challenging questions his DNA posed about our shared origins. Then, in 2001, a paper published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences shook the field. The study claimed that Mungo Man's mitochondrial DNA, mtDNA, the genetic code passed down through the maternal line, didn't match that of living Aboriginal Australians. Instead, it seemed to belong to an extinct human lineage, suggesting that modern Aboriginal people might not have been the very first to settle Australia. This lined up with older theories of multiple migration waves into the continent and even hinted at connections to archaic hominins such as Homo erectus from Indonesia. To reach this conclusion, researchers analyzed Mungo Man's DNA along with remains from Cow Swamp, using a method called the polymerase chain reaction, PCR. PCR is a powerful tool in molecular biology that allows scientists to multiply tiny fragments of DNA millions of times, making them readable even when the original sample is nearly invisible. Imagine trying to make sense of a single faint sentence in a book that's tens of thousands of years old. PCR acts like a high-powered photocopier, amplifying that sentence until the words come back into focus. In 2001, scientists used PCR to replicate and study Mungo Man's mitochondrial DNA and that of another individual known as Cow Swamp 8. Their findings suggested genetic sequences that fell outside the known diversity of modern Aboriginal Australians, fueling the idea that Australia's human story was more complex and perhaps far older than previously believed. The 2001 study proposed that these unusual DNA sequences hinted at a separate population of humans, one that might have been either replaced by later arrivals or genetically altered through what's known as a selective sweep an evolutionary process where certain traits dominate and erase earlier genetic diversity. But the story didn't end there. Years later, a team from Griffith University's Research Center for Human Evolution, led by Professor David Lambert, decided to put those controversial findings to the test. Armed with far more advanced DNA technology than what was available two decades earlier, they set out to re-examine Mungo Man and other ancient remains from the Willandra Lakes. This time, instead of relying on the older PCR methods used in 2001, Lambert's team applied second-generation DNA sequencing combined with specialized capture techniques, tools specifically designed to work with the fragile, degraded DNA that ancient remains typically hold, especially in Australia's harsh climate, where heat and dryness accelerate decay. They also employed single primer extension, SPECS, a cutting-edge method that zeroes in on very short DNA fragments and helps minimize modern contamination. To ensure accuracy, they carefully collected bone shavings from Mungo Man and other remains, treating the samples with sodium hypochlorite to strip away any traces of modern DNA. Their mission was clear, determine whether authentic human DNA survived within these remains, confirm its ancient origins, and map out its mitochondrial sequences. The results, however, were not what anyone expected. Mungo Man's remains did contain DNA, 
but it did not match Aboriginal Australians. Instead, the sequences aligned with five European mitochondrial haplogroups, all common in modern European populations. The conclusion was unavoidable. The earlier results had been compromised by contamination, most likely introduced while the bones were handled in the decades since their discovery. Even the Cow Swamp 8 sample failed to show genuine Aboriginal DNA, and none of the sequences from the 2001 study could be repeated. The real breakthrough came with a different set of remains. WLH4, dating from the late Holocene period, roughly 300 to 500 years ago. Unlike Mungo Man, WLH4's bones were far less mineralized, suggesting they were younger and more likely to preserve DNA. When the Griffith team sequenced them, the payoff was extraordinary. They successfully recovered two complete mitochondrial genomes. One belonged to haplogroup S2, a lineage found exclusively among Aboriginal Australians. The other turned out to be haplogroup V3C, a distinctly European sequence, clearly contamination. Crucially, the S2 genome showed unmistakable signs of authentic ancient DNA damage, including cytosine deamination, a natural chemical breakdown that occurs over thousands of years. This was historic, the first time a complete mitochondrial genome had ever been recovered from an ancient Aboriginal Australian. The S2 haplogroup placed WLH4 firmly within the genetic diversity of modern Aboriginal Australians, clustering alongside indigenous lineages such as S, O, P, and M. Using Bayesian analysis, a statistical approach that merges existing data with new evidence, the team was able to estimate that the most recent common ancestor of WLH4's S2 lineage lived around 2,800 years ago, with the broader haplogroup stretching back roughly 35,500 years. The new research ultimately disproved the bold claims of the 2001 study, which had suggested the existence of an extinct human lineage in Australia. Instead, the evidence pointed to a much clearer conclusion. Aboriginal Australians were the first inhabitants of the continent, with no genetic signs of an earlier, unrelated population, at least until future discoveries prove otherwise. The supposed European sequences found in Mungo Man and WLH4 were now understood to be the result of contamination, introduced during excavation, handling, storage, or even laboratory analysis. In many ways, the mistakes of the 2001 research were a reflection of the time. Ancient DNA work in the early 2000s relied heavily on PCR amplification. While powerful, this method could easily multiply even the smallest traces of modern DNA, creating false positives. Without today's clean room environments and advanced sequencing technologies, contamination was almost inevitable. The Griffith University team changed the game. By using next-generation sequencing and the SPECS method, they were able to separate authentic ancient DNA from modern interference. Their work showed that the sequences highlighted by the 2001 study weren't evidence of an extinct human population at all. They were simply artifacts of contamination. In fact, the team even traced one of the supposed ancient European sequences back to a very human source. Gregory J. Adcock, one of the 2001 study's own researchers, whose DNA matched the haplogroup that had been reported in the original results. Beyond the science, Mungo Man's story also revealed a glimpse into the spiritual world of Australia's first people. His burial was no ordinary act. His body had been carefully positioned and covered with red ochre, a practice that suggests ritual, belief, and a rich cultural tradition stretching back tens of thousands of years. On May 24, 2022, Mungo Man's remains, along with those of Mungo Lady, LM1, were reburied in the sands of Lake Mungo at a secret location. For many Aboriginal community members, this was a moment of healing, returning their ancestors to the earth where they belonged. Yet not everyone agreed. Some scientists expressed concern that reburial might limit future opportunities for study, especially as advancing technology could one day make it possible to recover even more detailed information, perhaps even nuclear DNA, from such ancient remains. Still, the broader lesson remains powerful. The debunking of the 2001 claims not only corrected a scientific error, it reinforced a truth that Aboriginal Australians have long known. They are the custodians of one of the oldest continuous cultures on Earth, their genetic and cultural lineage stretching back tens of thousands of years. Thank you for joining us on this journey into Australia's deep past. If you found this story fascinating, please remember to like, subscribe, and share with others who love history and archaeology. And don't forget, we'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Until next time, farewell.